given drug tends to have the same action that is pharmacodynamics across all species. However, perhaps the biggest difference between species is seen with respect to the manner and rates at which drugs are eliminated from the body. So the veterinarian has a big job keeping track of species differences. When it comes to drug therapy, they need to be a comparative pharmacologist. And a huge part of that task is understanding the species differences in drug metabolism and elimination. Yes, for all species, except for one. What do we mean by elimination of drugs from the body? Well, the body is always acting to eliminate substances that it considers foreign, or in the case of endogenous ones, that are present at non-physiological levels. Why is it important from a practical standpoint? The disappearance of active mo drug molecules from the bloodstream or body is almost always related to termination of the drug's effect or pharmacodynamics. So if we know how fast they're eliminated and at what concentrations are required to attain their therapeutic effect, we can then estimate how much and how frequently we need to administer the drug. What are the two processes involved in elimination? Well, first, metabolism or biotransformation. The action of many drugs, especially lipophilic compounds, is terminated by enzymatic conversion, metabolism, the endogenous, or biotransformation if it's acting on a xenobiotic to biologically inactive derivatives. In most cases, the enzymatic conversion forms a more hydrophilic compound that can be more readily excreted in the urine. Most of the enzymes that catalyze drug metabolizing reactions are located in the GI tract and the liver. Some drugs inhibit drug metabolizing enzymes and thus cause drug-drug interactions when co-administered with drugs that depend upon metabolism for elimination. The second process is excretion. The most common route for drug excretion is through the kidney and out of the body in the urine. To be excreted by the kidney, drugs need to be reasonably hydrophilic so that they will remain in the fluid that becomes the urine. Patients with impaired kidney function usually have a reduced ability to eliminate hydrophilic drugs. And in order to avoid excessively high drug concentrations in these patients, you will need to reduce their dosages and give, do give them less frequently. Drugs also may be handled by the liver to be secreted into the bile, then excreted in the feces. Now, let's discuss a practical example of how these processes, and even the math, can help us understand differences in administering a dose of the drug aspirin to a cat versus a dog. As recently as 40 years ago, it was thought in veterinary medicine that you could not safely administer aspirin to a cat. They would suffer from severe illness and potentially die when given the same dose of aspirin as a similarly sized dog. So let's try to understand this difference. After ingestion, aspirin, also called acetyl salicylic acid, is normally rapidly converted to the major circulating active metabolite, salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is then excreted in the urine unchanged or following conjugation with glucuronic acid, forming phenolic and acyl glucuronides, and with glycine, forming salicyl urate. However, as shown, there is considerable variation in utilization of these pathways between species. In comparison, dogs excrete approximately equal amounts of unchanged sal salicylate, salicylate, and salicyl glucuronides into their urine after administration. But cats excrete mostly salicyl glucuronides with some unchanged salicylate, but only a minor amount of salicyl urate. So the lack of the ability to conjugate glycine seems to severely limit the metabolic rate of aspirin in the cat, to the extent that it is about 20% of that of the dog. As we discussed in other videos, the elimination rate constant is inversely related to the half-life, and in this case, the half-life uh, in the dog is four and a half hours, and in the cat is 22 hours. So let's take a look at how a standard dosage of aspirin in a four kilogram dog, that is given 10 milligrams per kilogram every 12 hours, would look with a simulation using a one compartment model that we explain in a separate video. You can see that this drug's relatively short half-life leads to a steady state of peaks and troughs in 12 to 24 hours. Now let's take a look at the same dosage given to a four kilogram cat.
Notice that the drug concentration has not really achieved a steady state. That is, it is still rising as of the end of the simulation of almost four days. And, more importantly, the accumulation of drug has continued to a concentration well above that seen in the dog. Now let's take a look at the runs of the dog and the cat overlaid on each other. The cat's concentrations continue to accumulate because the rate of elimination is five times slower than in the dog. In clinical practice, this is why we space dosing aspirin in the cat to every 48 to 72 hours, and that's four to six times less frequently than in the dog. So the drug can be safely administered, but only when you account for its elimination rate. This also explains why many non-steroidal anti-inflammatory anti drugs like aspirin are more toxic in cats and consequently are contraindicated in this species. Although we won't go into more detail here because the principle is the same, metabolism and elimination of other drugs like acetaminophen, that is Tylenol, and propofol in the cat are dependent upon the addition of glucuronic acid to production of more water-soluble metabolites for excretion. Because cats lack two major glucuronosal transferase enzymes, specifically called UGT1A6 and UGT1A9, these drugs are also more slowly eliminated in cats, leading to overt toxicity or requiring an adjustment to dosage regimens, which we would do in propofol, but not with Tylenol, which is overtly toxic. In cats, propofol may be tolerated less well than in dogs, as it is metabolized and eliminated more slowly. Cats may be susceptible to long recoveries when propofol is used alone, particularly as a constant rate infusion or over periods beyond 48 hours. A new formulation of propofol is particularly um, problematic, as it is, it's a product labeled for dogs and is even more toxic to cats because it contains the preservative benzyl alcohol which can also be potentially toxic to cats at high doses for the same reasons. Benzyl alcohol is sometimes found as a preservative in fluid preparations, and those preparations should be avoided completely in the cat. Drug metabolism differences can occur between breeds as well. For example, the canine CYP2B11 may be the isoenzyme responsible for propofol metabolism in dogs. Greyhounds and other sighthound breeds clear propofol more slowly than mixed breed dogs or beagles. So in summary, veterinarians need to be aware of the differences between species with respect to drug elimination rates, including metabolism and excretion. The liver and kidney are the main organs responsible for drug elimination. Drug elimination is often the main factor leading to the termination of action of an administered drug. Drug elimination rates are key to understanding the rational design of drug dosages and intervals. Inappropriate extrapolation of drug dosages from one species to another can lead to serious undertreatment or worse toxicity and possibly death. And finally, drug metabolic differences have also been identified in certain dog breeds. For example, caution should be taken with administering anesthesia and other drugs to sighthounds. Mm -hmm.